The treasury pillars standing in Pioneers Park, Lincoln, Nebraska, look like they could come from an ancient Roman temple. Standing 36 feet tall and weighing over 30 tons, these four columns come from the U.S. Treasury Building in Washington, D.C. But how is it they arrived in the middle of the United States? Their history begins all the way back in 1800, 67 years before Nebraska was even a state. The U.S. government was moving to Washington, D.C. from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and new government buildings were being erected alongside Pennsylvania Avenue. The first to be completed was the Department of the Treasury, containing 31 rooms. On January 20th, 1801, a fire broke out in an upper room, significantly damaging the entire building. During the War of 1812, the British came through town and sought out the building hoping to find it full of money. However, in 1814, finding only old records, they burned it for the second time. Once those pesky British were forced out, a second treasury building was built, completed in 1817. Jumping ahead six years, and on March 30th, 1833, a certain Richard H. White supposedly set fire to the building in an attempt to destroy some incriminating pension records stored inside, though he was later acquitted of the charges. Three years later, on July 4th, 1836, on a site selected by President Andrew Jackson, and having learned their lesson from the previous three fires, Congress authorized the construction of a fireproof building large enough for present and future accommodations. Robert Mills, the architect of other national buildings such as the Washington Monument and the Patent Office Building, designed the third and current Treasury Building. The design included 30 columns on the east wing, they were erected between 1839 and 1842 out of a type of sandstone called Aquia Creek Freestone. This early third iteration of the Treasury Building contained 150 rooms. In April 1861, two days after the fall of Fort Sumter to the Confederacy and the start of the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln ordered 75,000 militia troops into Washington, D.C. There wasn't enough housing to accommodate this influx of troops, so the soldiers were encamped in and around the Capitol, Patent Office, and the U.S. Treasury Building. The Treasury Building was also fortified into a makeshift bunker for the President and his cabinet to shelter in, should the need arise. President Lincoln, who often visited the building, would stand between these pillars, surveying the troops drilling and camped in the yard. Fast forward about 40 more years, and by the early 1900s, the east wing columns were now coated in soot and grime from coal-burning fireplaces and furnaces, leading to pockmarked deterioration of the soft sandstone surface. In the summer of 1908, the sandstone columns were carefully detached from the portico and replaced with solid granite pillars. The sandstone columns were set aside and left to sink into a vacant lot until a use for them could be decided upon. Eight years later, in 1916, Commissioner of the District Excise Board, Cotter T. Bride, bought and shipped four columns to Lincoln, Nebraska to honor his friend and Nebraska politician, William Jennings Bryan, who had just finished his run as the United States Secretary of State under President Woodrow Wilson. The other 26 columns left behind were blown up two years later to clear the lot for the current National Academy of Sciences building. The portico pillars were first placed at the northern entrance of Antelope Park. A plaque commemorating this event was cast from metal recovered from the USS Maine, which sank in 1898 in Havana Harbor. In 1975, the four pillars and plaque were moved to their current home in the middle of Pioneers Park, with a dedication ceremony taking place on May 22, 1976, as part of a bicentennial celebration between the City Parks Department and the Junior League of Lincoln. Now the Treasury pillars serve as a monument to the past, an oddity to be wondered about, and a setting to get married. These pillars have stood right in the heart of our country's history, and now they will rest in the heartland of America. 
There are countless threads of history like this to discover. Let me know in the comments what your favorite historical thread is. If you want to know more about the U.S. Treasury Building's history, I'll leave a link to a free ebook that I found really interesting while researching this video. Feel free to share it with your history friends, and subscribe so you don't miss any future history thread videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.